We are standing here in the Mjolnir control room. Mjolnir is the name of Thor's hammer and also the megajoule neutron imaging radiography experiment, which we are using to take very fast pictures of things with neutrons. That's right, folks. You heard it here first. Thor's hammer is real, and it shoots particles that let us see through things. What? So you've all heard of x-ray vision. We're trying to have neutron vision to look through something. Neutrons and x-rays are a little bit different. Uh, they are sensitive to different materials. So you'll be able to see different features with neutrons versus x-rays. To help us understand this, we gotta back up a tiny bit. The kind of light that we can see, called visible light, is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's essentially a bunch of tiny little particles called photons, and these particles are bouncing off of things and reflecting back to us, hitting our eyes and allowing our brains to create an image. A camera is similar. Light bounces off the subject and is reflected into the camera lens. The camera records those photons as information, either physically onto a piece of film or digitally onto a computer chip. Now, X-rays are also electromagnetic radiation, photons. We just can't see them, they're not visible light. These photons are moving at a frequency where they don't bounce off of things, they travel through them. X-rays aren't very well absorbed by the soft tissue of your body, but they are well absorbed by harder stuff like your bones. That means that fewer photons make it to the detector in the shape of those harder materials, which is what gives us our X-ray image. But capturing either of these images requires that we leave enough time for those particles to bounce off of or travel through our subject and then be recorded. For photons, in most situations, this would take less than a second, but it also depends on what we want to capture. If we want to capture something that's moving at super high speed, we're going to have to snatch an image super quickly to get just that slice. It's kind of like a super quick blink. In this case, for example, our blink wasn't fast enough to keep up with our moving object's speed. The motion blur we can see is where information has been lost. For a camera, this blink is called the shutter speed. With a regular photograph, it usually takes less than a second for enough photons to be captured to create an image. And if instead of photons, we're talking about neutrons? Uh, it may take minutes or hours to get enough neutrons onto your detector to actually get a usable photo. What we're trying to do in this experiment for the first time is take a neutron picture in just 50 billionths of a second or 50 nanoseconds. Think about your iPhone camera, which can maybe take 100 pictures in a second. This can take a picture 10,000 times faster than that, but using neutrons, not visible light, which means that we can look through vastly different and much, much thicker materials. Our team is trying to take a dynamic neutron image for the first time ever. But that's a pretty tall order because neutrons are harder to detect than photons. So if we want to take an image, we're going to need a lot of neutrons. And if we want to take that neutron image of something moving at super high speed, we're going to need a lot of neutrons in a very small amount of time, like a super quick blink. You need all of your neutrons to really be originating from the same point in space in order to make a crisp image. There's a lot going on, but here's the question. Why do we need to be able to take pictures with neutrons in the first place, especially if they're so tricky? If you're trying to look inside of an engine, fuel is actually squirting through that engine so fast that a shutter time of 40 nanoseconds will introduce motional blur. And scientists would like to know as they're developing engines to be more efficient, if the fuel actually looks like what their computer codes are predicting. The reason it's difficult to look through an engine with x-rays is that it's essentially a metal box with fuel flowing inside of it. X-rays absorb really well on metals, but they absorb terribly on the fuel. So you lose almost all of your light in the metal box that you're not trying to look at, and then you get almost no contrast on the fuel that you are trying to look at. Neutrons are the opposite. They go right through metals very easily and then get absorbed 
very strongly on materials such as fuel. So you get high contrast on the fuel that you're looking to see while at the same time being able to see through the engine. It may even have medical uses because there are ways that we can look at the human body with neutrons, but obviously a human cannot sit still for minutes or hours in order to get an, a uh, non-blurry photo. Okay, so being able to take a super fast neutron image would be super useful, but from a technical standpoint, it's pretty hard. So where do we start? With a really big building. The experiment itself is located in a pit. The pit puts several feet of concrete between us and the experiment and keeps us shielded from those neutrons, which could otherwise hurt us by giving us too high of a radiation dose. And it turns out the first thing you need to make a bunch of really high energy neutrons is a lot of energy. So these are our pulse power towers. We have six of them. In each one of these pressure vessels, we have eight capacitors. A capacitor is kind of like a battery, but it can discharge its energy very, very quickly, unlike a battery. So while it might take you minutes or hours to charge your iPhone battery, we charge the capacitors in about 30 seconds and then discharge them in about a few millionths of a second. You can't pull energy off of the grid that quickly. You need to store it in something temporary. Those capacitors can hold two megajoules of energy. To put that into perspective, pushing that two megajoules into Mjolnir for an experiment means that for a few millionths of a second, this machine is using about five times the electrical power consumed by the entire state of California. That's pretty wicked. That pulse power is transmitted through these high voltage cables into our transmission plate and then direct it across an anode and a cathode, which are inside the chamber. Do you wanna come take a look inside? During an experiment, there's a little bit of deuterium gas inside the chamber. Deuterium is a special kind of hydrogen that has one proton and one neutron, whereas regular hydrogen has just the one proton. The big spiky thing in the middle of the chamber is actually one big metal column in the center, that's the anode, which has a positive charge, and then the smaller columns, or the spikes, all around it are cathodes. They're negatively charged, and together they make what's called a gun. When all that energy from the capacitors downstairs gets turned on, Three, two, one. Some of the deuterium gas heats up into a plasma, which now has a great deal of electrical current running through it. This electrified plasma is also leaving a super strong magnetic field in its wake. And all of these really cool physics interactions are making it behave in a specific way, rolling down the length of the gun until it curls inward and forms a pattern called a Z-pinch. Now, at this point, the plasma is pretty unstable, which actually is a good thing. Turns out it's those instabilities that actually drive these very large electric fields that accelerate ions in the plasma into other ions that are more or less sitting still. And that reaction of slamming that ion beam into a target is what creates the neutrons. Basically, the Z-pinch slams the deuterium particles into other particles, creating a small-scale fusion reaction that releases neutrons. And this is our neutron source. So now we can take our picture. The neutrons are generated right below this, or right behind this plate right here. And they actually go into all directions, which is part of the reason why we're located in a pit in the ground, because we don't want to irradiate people. So we have a lot of shielding between us and the machine. And then they come forward and go into our test objects. So the test objects are the things that we are trying to make a picture of right now. Uh, eventually, we would be making a picture of things that are actually moving. Right behind the subject the team is trying to image is part one of the camera box, which is detecting the neutrons that make it past the subject. It's connected to part two of the camera box, which is making sure that the camera's blink, or how fast it takes the picture, is incredibly fast. Like... Like 50 billionths of a second. So all of this is already wicked cool. But Andrea and her team want to keep pushing the boundaries of what Mjolnir can achieve. And the first order of business is more neutrons. Getting more neutrons out of the machine is like shining more light on an object when you're trying to take a photograph of it. It gives you more signal and it allows for your picture to be clearer. And to make more neutrons, we need more energy. 
So we're pushing the envelope on how much current we're able to run through this device and we'll actually be pushing more current through it than really has ever been run through a dense plasma focus before. The reason that we think we may be able to be successful is that we have a very advanced modeling capability that guides us in how we shape our electrodes and the various ways that we manipulate the plasma. And that was a model that was not really available previously because it's so computationally expensive that it has to be run on supercomputers. Yep, the superpower behind the throne here is supercomputing in the form of simulating variations of these experiments to find the best ones that we should actually do in real life. Then the data collected from these real life experiments can be used to make the simulations even better and even more accurate. So it's basically one big productive cycle that feeds itself. Andrea and the team want to keep optimizing these simulations and keep improving the design of the cathode anode gun to be able to make a brighter neutron source that'll allow them to take even faster pictures that are in even sharper focus. So there's a bright neutron filled future in front of Mjolnir and hopefully it'll help us see into and through things we've never been able to before. Superman's x-ray visions get nothing on this. If you liked this video, then subscribe to LLNL's channel for more deep dives into our science and leave a comment below on what you'd like to see us cover next. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.